Great. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Spirit of Fire Fellowship. I'm Pastor Mike May here in the great city of Richmond, Virginia, and we want to welcome everybody to our online worship experience. We don't believe it's by chance that you're here today, but we do believe that there will be something that will be shared that's going to be a blessing to your life. So on behalf of my wife, Pastor Raquel, and myself, we want to say welcome to everybody, all of our Spirit of Fire people out there, our Spirit of Fire nation. We love you guys, those near and far, all of our partners, supporters, and friends of the ministry. We thank God for you. We thank God that you're tuning in today to this platform. You will be glad that you tuned in today uh, because I'm about to kick off a new series that's going to, I believe, transform and change your life for the better. And so... I want us to do this for all of our first timers. We just want to say welcome, welcome, welcome to you today. We love you guys. We appreciate you so very much. And we thank God for you showing up. Like I always say, there are many other platforms that you can be watching right now, but you're tuned in here today. And there'll be people that God will begin to bring in, even as we're moving on forward with the the, the service today that people will be coming in. And, and I understand all of that. Some come in later than others, but I want all of you right now, all of our Spirit of Fire members, partners, and supporters, if you would, to begin to share this message because I'm gonna address some things today that's gonna be vitally important. I've been quiet for the past couple of weeks. I've been on a little vacation. I'm going, I got some more time that I need to take off and just get before God. But one of the things that um, I just wanna say is I'm so proud of my wife, Pastor Raquel. She did a phenomenal job last week while I was out of town. I was actually at the airport listening to her message while I was coming back into town. And so uh, I told her, I was like, girl, you better preach. I said, you better speak that word. <laughs> so um, she did a great job. So let's salute her. Let's thank God for her. And so uh, before I get started, I do want to have a word of prayer. Um, uh, dealing with some things. I wanted to have a quick word of prayer and then I'll share some things that I'm going to share. Father, we thank you for this, another opportunity to minister to these, your precious sheep. I thank you that revelation, knowledge of your word will flow freely from heaven, uninterrupted and unhindered by any satanic or demonic force and under me, all of you. Thank you that every ear is anointed to hear, every heart open, ready to receive the engrafted word of God, which is able to save our souls. Speak to my vocal cords, think to my mind, to bring wisdom, knowledge, and good understanding of the word. I cover the gifts of the spirit. We cover the gifts to be in operation and demonstration. And so, Father, we thank you for it in advance. We thank you, Holy Spirit, that you are the great teacher. You are the great miracle worker, the one ready to give us peace. I ask for the spirit of wisdom to rest heavy upon me today, the spirit of knowledge and understanding, the fear of the Lord to articulate properly what it is that's in my heart and that what I believe I need to share. Thank you for all of the people listening today i pray that all is well with them i speak your peace i thank you things will not be misconstrued in any way shape fashion or form we come against the wicked one that right now we rebuke even the spirit of misunderstanding and father we thank you in advance for clarity of thought clarity of mind and spirit and so we give you the glory in advance for it now in the name of jesus amen all right let me let me begin to share some things um i've been <laughs> even as i was preparing for this and as i was sitting there thinking um i want not to be too quick to talk about something to to respond to something to deal with something because i know even scripture declares that a person uh who who's quick to respond to a matter before hearing everything out is called a fool and so I don't want to be labeled as a fool because I don't hear what I need to hear, get the information that I need to get to, to make an inform whether it's decision or opinion or to share what I need to share. Um, and so before I get started on this new series, which is really one of the reasons that I'm going to start this new series that sparked it for me. Um, lately, there's been a big upheaval in the body of Christ uh, based off of some uh, a message that was shared. Uh, by Dr. Creflo Dollar, which is actually my spiritual father. And so he's our covering. We're submitted up under his ministry. We're a part of the Ministerial Association. Uh, my wife and I, my family, we were actually members there for over four years when we moved there to sit up under the ministry to receive before we launched out into ministry. And um, recently he uh, did this teaching dealing with tithing, the subject of tithing, even under grace. And so it has caused a big uproar in the body of Christ. And so one of the things I need, um, well, I, I wrote it down. I think I have it in my heart. I can share it. 
um, it, it is something that a lot of people have been responding. And I know some people may have been wondering, Pastor, what's your take? People who know that we're up under his ministry, him and Pastor Taffy, and um, that we're connected and, and just how I taught the word of God throughout my life and years in ministry. And it, it's sad in my heart to see some of the responses that have come out um, from people. It's like, OK, the, you know, people have been so quick to respond without really listening, number one, to the message in its entirety and understanding things leading up to that message. And so um, I want to begin to address some things. Now, I'm not going to deal specifically with that subject today, but I'm going to begin to teach some things. And so there are many people um, and it, it, it just amazed me how many people it did and it didn't. How many people have started addressing? I mean, you can pull up on YouTube, Facebook, whatever. I mean, people jumped on it quick. And, and, I, and I get it that there are pastors and leaders who felt as though that they needed to address it because of the level of influence that Dr. Dollars had in the body of Christ, and especially in certain circles, uh, more, more so even like word of faith circles, but outside of that even. And so many prominent ministers have been addressing it, talking about it, dealing with it. And it, it's a couple of things that begin to come off the page at me. Uh, when I say come off the page, that begin to kind of, uh, that I wanted to address and one of the things is, it's amazing how the internet has kind of made old things new, that this is nothing new really, um, but it's just the fact that now because of social media and the access that we have worldwide, that now is, it's a bigger platform for things to be shared, to be said, and everybody has um, an opinion. Um, and everybody, you have your right to your opinion, your belief system, whatever the case is. But it's amazing how we just blow things up. And so a lot of it um, I begin to see is a lot of preachers are now coming against, whether it's for or against. And the ones a lot of times against. Now, I'm not saying all have done this, but there are some that they, they respond even out of fear, out of fear of people not doing things because religion holds you in bondage with rules and regulations. And I actually had a, a person, a former member actually contact me and say, hey, Pastor, I just wanted to ask your opinion about it. And what do you have to say? And, um, and, I, and I told them this, I said, number one, I says, if you don't understand the love of God, the unconditional love of God, I said, I haven't heard the message yet. I said, but I'm going to listen to it so that I can properly address because I can't address anything I haven't heard. Um, and so and normally I'll follow up and listen to messages after I preach myself and follow to feed my own faith. Uh, where my spiritual father is concerned, just like I hope you all do, that, you know, if you don't come in and hear the live message, you go back and at least get the recap and, and replay and get it into your spirit so you know what's going on. So that sometimes what can happen is if you miss certain parts of a message, you don't get the totality of that thing. So then when something is introduced down the line, you don't fully get it because you weren't along for steps one through 10. So then when step 11 was introduced, all of a sudden it's harder for you to grasp it. Why? Because you didn't follow through with everything else. And so one of the things I did, I wanted to sit down and listen to it and to, to hear it for myself. And I actually just came from the Grace Life Conference where I spent a few days away in Atlanta and just receiving the word. And I'm telling you, it transformed and changed my life. Um, one of the things that I expressed was a level of freedom, was a level of, uh, uh, and this is something God has already been dealing with me about, the freedom from people, um, from things and situations. And God has really dealt with me about, it's time for your voice to be heard. It's time for you to get out there. And a lot of times I've been quiet over the years with certain things because knowing what comes along with it, the persecution that comes with it, that I had had a tendency to draw back. Um, but God says no longer. And I'm saying no longer. And so now I have to begin to really share some things along these lines. Now, I'm going to be, be straight up. It was amazing to see how many people who responded, who did not take the time to even investigate what was shared and taught. They just automatically went against off of somebody else's information. And that's a dangerous thing to do. That's a dangerous thing to ever do. 
You got to have enough resolve and enough wisdom within yourself to begin to find out a matter for yourself and investigate for yourself. The Bible even says the Berean Christians were called more noble because they received the word of God with all readiness of mind. But then they did this. They studied the scriptures daily to see if those things were so. And so sometimes if you don't understand the message that is best for you to just put it on the shelf and say, you know what, even if I don't get it all right now, let me really study to see if this thing is true. Because of even if you have, have received the word of the Lord from this man of God over the years and you receive and you understand the integrity of the word and know his life and know that he's a man of integrity. Um, the ministry is a ministry of integrity. And I'm telling you now, just knowing how Dr. Dolly is with things, he is not going to introduce something that he's not one has studied, is not confident about. And he's quick to repent if he sees that something that he said is out of line or wrong and that he'll come back and correct it. And so I applaud him for that. That's called integrity. And so one of the things that I want to start off with is saying that after seeing it, after studying it and after actually knowing some things even concerning the grace message and concerning tithing and giving, I would have to say that he is very sound, that the message was extremely sound, line upon line, precept upon precept. And so anytime something is introduced, and I'm going to say it straight up, I fully support my pastor. I fully support him, at, um, Pastor Taffy. I support the ministry. We are on board with them. And so, and I'm just telling you this straight up, I'm just going to keep it a buck. I'm going to keep it a hundred today. And so one of the things that I have to share um, is that you have to take time. And one of the things I already knew as things begin to be introduced out of the word, if you have not, and preachers, this is interesting. There were a lot of preachers I already knew that were not in alignment or agreement with him teaching the grace message the way he was teaching it. There was always this fear of, well, if you teach that, you're given a license to sin. And no, you're not given a license to sin because if anything, grace will bring you out of sin. I'll get to that in a second. I won't get ahead of myself because today I'm going to start a series entitled Grace. I'm going to teach on this. And so I taught on this. I started teaching on this probably about 2014, maybe 15. I did about a three to four week um, series. It might have been a little longer on this topic. Um, and as I begin to introduce it, but, you know, a lot of times when you first introduce a message, you're kind of working through it. For anybody that's a minister, you're working through it. You're getting things in yourself, things you begin to see in the beginning that more enlightenment comes as you study more, as you understand it more, as you learn more. And I'm like this. I want to grow. I want to I want to be better than I was yesterday. And so sometimes with growing, you have to make corrections to things. And even us as preachers and teachers of the world. If you come, if you come to the, if you come to the, if you think that you learned everything about a subject, I'm talking about preachers now, because there, there, there are some preachers that tune in and listen to me as I'm preaching. And if you just think that you got everything there is to know about a subject, I don't care how well you taught it in the past. There is, this word is so pregnant with revelation that God will show you something that you've been reading the scripture all your life and you will miss something. And all of a sudden, enlightenment will hit you. The Holy Spirit will reveal things to you. And sometimes he reveals it to you when you're ready to receive it. And so he will not prematurely show you something that will get you off course and out of alignment. But is as a result of you digging in that word and studying that word and, and spending time with your father, spending time with the Holy Spirit. And he begins to reveal the truths of the word of God to you. And so there are things that we got to now say, OK, even though I taught it then. I got to start reteaching it and start implementing it more and more because it's going to be vitally important. One of the other points I want to, before I get into the message, there was a couple of points. Number one, I talked about it, it's amazing how the internet, you know, when things come across the internet, how quickly it, it seems like it's something new. But this has been a debate for years. Whether you tithe, don't tithe, tithe and under the law, tithe and under the New Testament, under, under grace. All of that stuff. And for anybody that's been around this ministry for any length of time, I began to introduce certain things years ago, probably back in 2013, 2014, might have been 2013. Um, and it brought a revelation of things because when you understand, and I'm going to share some stuff ahead of time. I'm trying to be very mindful of what, 
what I want to say. But I'll, I'll get to that later. So the, the important part is this. It's amazing how many people I felt as though they were just waiting. You can tell people that were just waiting for something to hit to jump on. It's like, aha, gotcha. That you can tell people that's for you behind the scenes and people who ain't been for you behind the scenes. Because of the, the mentality, the mindset, the spirit behind it. Now, I'm going to be straight up. As I start teaching some of this stuff, you know, there may be people who may not want to rock with me anymore. But listen, I'm, I've been so used to being isolated all my life. This, this ain't nothing for me. So I'm used to being the odd one out sometimes with things. So and I see why God raised me up the way that he did so that he can put a word in my mouth to share what I need to share without hindrance of loss. Because when you've lost mostly everything and you've been there, hey, you ain't fearing it no more because, you know, God is on your side and God is with you. Now, I'm sharing this because I want to speak to ministers that may be out there listening for people who have preached and people who have been ready. Listen, if this man has ever for those that have listened to him and he has blessed your life and you've understood the integrity of it, of his message and his ministry, I think it's going to be vitally important that you give an opportunity to listen thoroughly and to hear the word of God out, hear the matter out. And if you still haven't gotten it, put it on the shelf, still continue to do what you've been doing. And now allow the Holy Spirit to begin to work in you, because this is one thing I've learned as a preacher. Sometimes we preach things and we wonder why some people don't get excited about it as we're excited about it. And the reason is because really we've gotten to a place through our study and time with the word that got us excited about that word that we ready to release. And now because they didn't get to that place, we got to give people an opportunity to hear the word, receive the word, study to show themselves approved so that now they can get this revelation that God is revealing through us as men and women of God. So I just want to share that. Now, I also need to share this account with you. Um, there was an individual um, and, I, and I wanted to say this because I wanted to hear his message on it and his comments on it. <clears throat> uh, Fred Jr., Fred Price Jr., um, he had shared uh, publicly, so I can share this because this public information is out there. And he began to share about it um, and he wanted to make comments on it because he said he had actually called Dr. Dollar and talked to him about it. And he said, hey, man, I want he said Dr. Dollar didn't ask him to do this. He said he wanted to do it. He wanted to publicly support him. And he said this. He said several years ago, God had given him similar revelation of this word of that message. And he talked to his dad about it. He says he was not going to introduce it to the church at that time out of respect for his father and blindside him was something, um, you know, a message that he hadn't been preaching, his dad hadn't been preaching. And so what he did was he called his family together. And I was so glad I listened to this because of the, uh, the influence and the impact that Apostle Frederick Price has had on the body of Christ that a lot of people would have been asking. A lot of people were asking Fred Jr., what is your take on this? And so what he did was when he got this revelation several years ago, he called his dad, his mama's dad, and I think four of his siblings, there's like six people together, and he shared and he went through the scriptures and shared what he believed God was giving him along those lines, which is very similar. And he said, out of, he says, now in that, out of those six people, he says it was split in half. Three got it and three were like, I don't know about that. He said one of the people who were like, I don't know, was his dad. But one of the people who got it instantly and saw it instantly was his mother. And so so it was like divided evenly. So but he waited and he says, I'm not going to share anything publicly yet. And he says after a period of time, he says about nine months later, he ended up introducing it to the congregation. He went on to say that later on, he said his father, as a result of his father sitting and listening to the word, he says his father fi finally came on board. It's like, I see it. I see it. I see it. You right on target. You right with it. And so sometimes what can happen is when we become so indoctrinated with something and then God reveals something new to us, it has to work through how we've already thought about that thing for so long. And sometimes what can happen is fear can set in. And now we're afraid that maybe if I'm wrong in this, what else may I be wrong in? And so as a preacher, 
We have to remain flexible, teachable, open to growth and development from the spirit of God and his word to now begin to say, hey, and, and not being afraid to come back and saying I was wrong for sharing it the way I shared it. And we have to do that. And so that's called integrity as well. And so one of the things I felt like I needed to do as a preacher, as a pastor, as a leader was to begin to reintroduce this message of grace now. And I want to go before I even start dealing with the tithing situation. I want to first go see, watch this. If you don't understand this love of God, if you don't understand the grace of God, where the old and the new Testament and the before, before the law, during the law, after the law and all of that is concerned, I can start introducing other stuff and it'll go right over your head or your spirit won't even be able to receive it because we haven't laid a foundation as to what the word of God says about certain things. So I want to go ahead and introduce this today. Simply entitled grace. And let's talk about this. So I've already prayed. I've already shared. And one of the things there may be some people that hear this, like I still don't rock. I don't agree with that. So, OK, that's cool. And listen, it, it's sad. It's sad that we allow these doctrinal differences cause us to lack fellowship in the body of Christ. The Bible declares that every joint supplies and that we know in part we prophesy in part and people teach in part. You have a part. I have a part. And the beauty of it is if we begin to come together and talk about the different parts that we have, then there'll be better, I think, healthier dialogue, healthier language, and that we can begin to grow as a body. And some of this because watch this. Even scripture says the, the fivefold, ministry, fivefold ministry has been given so that we can all come into the unity of the faith. And I believe that's one of the things that's holding back even the return of Jesus is because one of the things we got to be mindful of is it's like if you look at scripture, just about everything is in place from a prophetic standpoint that Jesus could come at any time. And so that there are certain things that if the Lord tarries and there may be a reason why he's tarrying or waiting for his return so that certain things can be put in place. And I believe that there's about to be and that it is already starting. There's a great outpouring. Um, somebody shared this. And I think Dr. Dollar shared this, even as uh, Fred Jr. was talking to him. And he says about every 10 years, it seemed like God has to do a reset. In the body of Christ. There are things that are introduced, reintroduced, things that are brought to the forefront. There are people who are brought to the forefront. It's like you, I've seen it. It's like in ministry, like new voices God begins to raise. It seems like within that 10 year span, this was something that I began to see and notice. And I've shared this in the past publicly <clears throat> that you begin to see things shifts happen in the earth and even in the body of Christ, because God is trying to introduce something. He's trying to represent something. He's trying to refresh some things in people's lives. And I'm believing and I'm seeing that God is, there's about to be an outpouring like we've never seen that God is flushing some things out of us and he's positioning us as the body of Christ in the earth, in the marketplaces, in unusual territories so that his glory can be revealed. And we as ministers of reconciliation have to be ready to share the reason of our hope and to be able to talk to people about this grace, this gospel of grace, this good news, this over the top good news about God's goodness, love and favor towards mankind. So if you ready, I want you to go ahead and get ready. I want you to go ahead and get your pen and your pads ready. We're going to go through the word of God and I'm not going to finish this today. I'm just getting started. So I need you to do this with me, y'all. For those that are listening, don't turn away. See, and see, that's the thing. That's some of the problem. Just because some just don't rub you the right way or all of a sudden it's coming against your theology. All of a sudden you ready to just quickly dismiss without even hearing the matter. And I know I've done it myself. That's how I know it. I've done it. And part of it was I was trying, I was doing it in the name of protecting my spirit. But what it was, was it was a level of fear that if I allow this to be introduced to me, then it may get me off of the foundation of what I've always known all of my, all of my life. And when something rocks your foundation, it can be a fearful thing. I know it. 
And so one of the things is you have to guard your heart. Scripture tells us to do that. But when we start digging deeper into the word, we got to go back and see. Let's let's see. Let's check this thing. That's why you got to check the word to see if what you've been hearing has been true all along. And a lot of times what happens is we become parrots and we just recite what we hear, but not recite, but not share based off of not just what we hear, but what we take back and study and get it in us and allow the revelation they hit us because there are preachers who preach don't preach out of revelation they just copy what they heard and just repeat what they heard but don't have the revelation in their heart i know it because i've done it i've done it and it doesn't come out with the same power like a word that's a it's a revealed word to you sometimes the preaching of it and the the, the preaching of it or the teaching of it just really is, is us getting acclimated to it. And in the middle of us teaching it, sometimes stuff hits us. It's like, doggone it, I see it. But we got to be mindful of that. We got to spend some time. That's why I was not too quick to say anything publicly. I wasn't too quick to bring out anything because I wanted to, to number one, take time to listen for myself. Number two, to begin to study some things. Some stuff was already in me. If, you, if you've been around me in the amount of time, some of what I'm getting ready to tell you is stuff I've already been preaching. But for those that may have come in late in the in the <laughs> in, in the the years or the times I've been preaching, I want to get everybody on board and up to speed together. So I want you to give me time. That's all I ask. Give me time to teach you. Give me time to deposit this. <laughs> yeah, I'm just, if I'm going to say it, I'm going to say it. One of the things we got to be mindful of, and I've been, see, some of this stuff I've been guilty of myself. Some stuff I haven't shared publicly is because, number one, I wanted to give time for fruitfulness to take place so that people will be more, more apt to hear. It doesn't mean what I have is wrong. It just means some people wouldn't be as quick to receive because of the level of status they think I have one way or another. But God says you need to start sharing what I placed in you over the years and the wisdom that's been acquired and the things that have been shared and the things that you've been picking up that you've been spending time with me and I've been depositing in your spirit. And he says, there's no longer time to be afraid. You're going to have to be bold. So intercessors, I need you praying for me now that a level of boldness will rise up in me, not just boldness, but wisdom, compassion, love and understanding that I I will speak the truth in love. And man, we get ready to dig in this. I believe some getting ready to break in your life. Something is getting ready to break in this thing. You hear me? I mean an explosion of God's goodness, grace, and favor like we have never seen before. I mean manifestations of his power. Even as I was listening to the message from Dr. Dollar, what began to happen was there was a greater level of generosity that began to rise up in me, and I wanted to start giving more. That's how I knew. Oh, this, this, this God here. This God. What? Who, Lord? I'm telling you. Okay, let's, let's jump into this because I'm about to get ready to get excited. Now, let's start dealing with this. What is the gospel? Let's, let's, let's start here with this question. What is the gospel? We know we're supposed to preach the gospel in season and out of season. And we know that the gospel by like a plain definition or translation means good news. But what is this good news? What is this gospel that we're to preach? Now, I'm going to start in John 1. Now, I know that was a long introduction. I wanted to start dealing with some of this stuff. I want you to just take time and listen. And I want us to get into this word together. John chapter 1, verse 12, verses 12 through 17. And it says, but as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. We're talking about Jesus which were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the father, full of grace and truth. And watch this. John bare witness unto a uh, witness of him and cried, saying, this was he of whom I spake. He cometh after me is preferred before me, for he was before me. 
and of his fullness have we all have all we received. Watch this and grace for grace for the law was given by Moses, but great, but, but grace and truth came by Jesus. The law was given by Moses, the Mosaic law, but grace and truth was given by Jesus. Now, I want to give this definition of grace as we begin to move forward. Let's begin to work this work in definition. By basic, by basic definition is God's unmerited, unearned, undeserved favor. Unmerited, unearned, undeserved favor. So you didn't do anything to get it. It was unearned. It was unmerited. You didn't. We didn't deserve it. It was freely given to us. But this is a, a definition that I want us to start working with, even through time of study, receiving, hearing. I want us to give us I want us to give this definition here. And this is going to be a definition I'm going to work with. Grace is the unmerited abounding provision of the unrestrained operation of God's infinite love through Jesus Christ on behalf of man especially those who depend on him. I'm going to read it again. Grace is the unmerited, abounding provision of the unrestrained operation of God's infinite love through Jesus Christ on behalf of man, especially those who depend on him. So there's a dependence that we need to have on God. We need to rely on him. See, the law was given so that now it was rules and regulations given that men had to now fulfill. But now God saw this. He gave the law to Moses. And now all of a sudden now he saw that men couldn't fulfill this law that he gave so that he sent his son to fulfill it for us. So that now watch this. We can be redeemed from the curse of this law. Now, I'm saying this in, in, in the beginning, but I'm going to prove it by scripture. And I'm saying it because I want to introduce it. I want to introduce it. We could not do it in and of ourselves. So Jesus was considered the final sin sacrifice, the lamb that was slain from the very foundations of the world to now fulfill what you and I could not fulfill in our own ability. OK, now I want to make this statement because this is going to be very important. The Old Testament is the New Testament concealed. And the New Testament is the Old Testament revealed. The Old Testament is the New Testament concealed. You, you begin to see the pictures even of Jesus throughout scripture. You begin to see this lining up from the fall of man, what we saw in the garden where man fell, to now we see Jesus coming. We see this whole, the Bible is about redemption. It's about the redemption of mankind, restoring what man lost. What Adam lost in the beginning was now gained back through the, the obedience of Jesus himself coming. OK. Now, let's go to Romans 1, 15 through 17. Romans 1, 15 through 17. And I'm reading this out of the King James. It says, so as much as it as in me is, I am ready to preach the gospel to you that are at Rome also. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. Now watch this. I'm not ashamed. Watch what he calls it. The gospel of Christ. For it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth. That's a highlight that underline it. Don't just read over it. Sometimes we read over scripture so quick that we miss the essence of it or key words that are very important. So now for it is the power of God the ability of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, that believeth, that believeth to the Jew first and also to the Greek for therein verse 17 is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith. As it is written, the just shall live how by faith. So your faith, my faith is important because faith 
watch this, acquires or applies to our life what grace has made available. Jesus now came and died to make this righteousness available to us for us to be in right standing with God. But it's those the power of God unto salvation to those who believe you have to believe this. Once you believe it's applied, that's good. Once it's, once you believe it, it's applied to your account now. See, that's why it's important. It's not through your doing, but it's through your believing that it's applied to your account. Come on, Holy Spirit. It's not through your doing, but through your believing it's applied. That's going to be very important because your faith has everything to do with this. This is why, because some people have come to say, well, we've been preaching some of this stuff and all of a sudden now this grace message comes out, but we've been, especially amongst faith people, people who've been dealing with the word of faith circles. It's been, it, it amazes as I begin to see it, it's like it's all been tied in together the whole time. It was just the fact that you didn't realize it was by the grace of God that all of the finished works were applied. But now we were just taught the faith aspect of you just now apply your faith to receive it or to cause it to come to pass in your life. And all we're doing is saying that, wait a minute, it's not your faith that's doing it. It's the grace that did it. Your faith is just receiving what grace has already made available to you. Let's keep going. All right. Yeah, I like this. Oh, I wish y'all was here with me. Oh, man. We, I might have to do a Zoom. Once we come in together in person, I'm, oh, man, this is going to be good. I hope y'all listening. Take good notes. Now, I want to go. I want to um, I want to read this out of the New Living Translation. Um, I'm starting here um, in verse 16 out of the New Living. It says for I, I'm still in Romans one. 16 and 17, he says, for I am not ashamed of this good news about Christ. It is the power of God at work, sa saving everyone who believes, saving everyone who believes, saving everyone who believes the Jew first and also the Gentile, saving everyone who believes, not everyone who does, but everyone who believes. OK, let me let me just keep going. Let me keep going. This good news tells us how God makes us right in his sight. This good news tells us how God, how God makes us right in his sight. Not how we make ourselves right in God's sight, how he makes us right in his sight. This is accomplished from, watch this, this is accomplished from start to finish by faith. This is accomplished from start to finish by faith. As the scriptures say, it is through faith that a righteous person has life. Now, I want to introduce this. Now, I want to introduce and, and say this, that the gospel of Christ talked about here is the gospel of grace or the grace of Christ. This unmerited, unearned, undeserved favor that Jesus came to fulfill what we could not fulfill on our own. He came to be the final sin sacrifice or the Bible calls him the last Adam. And so and we'll see in scripture what one at the first Adam messed up. The second Adam came to restore and to fix. Now, <laughs> let's go to Galatians chapter one. Galatians chapter one. Just stay with me. Stay with me. I know we read it. We like the prophecies and we like all that. We got We got to dig into this because I want y'all solid in this. So that you can begin to share with other people as they come and ask you questions about it. Paul verse. I'm starting verse one. I'm going to deal with verses one through twelve. Verses one through twelve. It says, Paul, an apostle, not of men, neither by man, but by Jesus Christ and God, the father who raised him from the dead and all the brethren which are with me unto the churches of Galatia. Grace be to you and peace from God, the father and from our Lord Jesus Christ, who gave himself for our sins. So Jesus gave himself for our sins that he might deliver us from this present world. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm going to read this. I'm going to read this out of the. Uh, yeah, I'm reading out the King James. I'm going to go ahead and stick with the King James for right now. I may want to go to the, uh, I may want to go to the new living to kind of bring it out a little better. 
to simplify it a little better. I'm still in verse four, who gave himself for our sins that he might deliver us from the present world according to the will of God and our father, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. He says, I marvel that you are so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ unto another gospel. He says, who called you into the grace of Christ. He talked about the gospel of Christ, and now he's calling, talking about the grace of Christ. He says, watch this, unto another gospel. He says, I'm surprised. I'm surprised that you are so soon removed. He says, men didn't call me an apostle. God called me an apostle. I was called on this road of Damascus experience where Jesus himself revealed this message to me to give to you. But now he begins to talk to the church at, at Galatia and says, wait a minute. I, I'm, I'm, I'm shocked that you are so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ unto another gospel, which is not another, but there be some that trouble you and would pervert the gospel of Christ. So now he says the gospel of Christ, the grace of Christ. And so you see, and that's why I talked about the gospel of Christ is the grace of Christ. This unmerited, unearned, undeserved favor. He says, watch this. He says, I, oh man, this is something, which is not another, but there uh, be some that trouble you and will pervert this gospel of Christ. But though we or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel unto you than that which we have preached you unto you, let him be accursed. Now, this is interesting because I believe through my study years ago that that's how the Mormon even um religion came into being. I believe it was John Smith, Joseph Smith, that there was an angel that appeared to him that revealed this other gospel to him. And that's what the, the foundation or the basis was. So it, it wasn't that he wasn't a man who didn't love God. It was just a fact that, okay, something else was introduced and he received it. And so now this is interesting how Paul even says this, that I don't care if we or an angel from heaven comes and preaches something different. Don't you receive it? Then what we preaching to you? Huh, this is, he says, let them be accursed. And we said before, so say I now again, if any man preach any other gospel unto you, then that you have received, let him be accursed. For do I now persuade men of God or do I seek to please men? For if I yet please men, I should not be the servant of Christ. But I certify you, brethren, that the gospel was, was, which was preached of me is not after man. For watch this, I neither received it of a man, neither was I taught it, but by the revelation of Jesus Christ. So he's saying, I didn't get this from anybody else. I got this straight from the man himself. This revelation of this grace, this gospel of grace, this gospel of Christ, I did not receive it from anybody else but from Jesus himself. This is important. And he says, after I've taught you this, if anybody comes and teaches you anything other than this, let them be a curse. Whoo, that's strong. That's strong. All right, let's keep going. <laughs> let's keep going. Verse, uh, I'm going to go to Romans 1 and 16. Romans 1 and 16 says this. Now, I want you to write these scriptures down. Go back, study them. Go back, research. Go back, look at it. For I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. Romans 1, 16. For I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. Now, we, we read that, but now I want you to say, I'm not ashamed of this gospel of Christ. That's the power of God unto salvation. That word salvation, soterio, sozo, meaning preservation, healing, soundness, wholeness. In other words, nothing missing, broken, or lacking. It's a, it's a completed package of everything that's now pertaining to life and godliness that has been bestowed unto us through the finished work of Christ. That finished work, when he died on the cross, said it is finished, that all of the requirements that the law brought into play, that now I fulfill this thing, and now you have access to the father now because the veil was rent from top to bottom on that hill at Calvary. And now even representing that, that he, that, that, oh man, I want to get ahead of myself that, that now that, 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 um, garment, that, that sheet that was rent from top to bottom, it was now representing 
that curtain that the priest had to go to in the Old Testament. He went into the holies of holies to present the sin sacrifice once a year on behalf of the people for to now cover their sins. Now that's been torn. Now watch this. No longer do you need anybody else to be a mediator other than Jesus himself. Jesus died, fulfilled all the requirements, and now you have divine access to the Father. You don't have to go through anybody else. You have this access, and now he's come to abide in you, to live in you, and to dwell in you. All right, let's keep going. <laughs> now, I only got a, I only got a few minutes here that I just want to start introducing this to you. I want to reintroduce this to some of you. Faith now is the means by which you appropriate. And let me make this statement: the grace of Christ is the power of God that will bring you all of the finished works of Christ. So the grace of Christ is the power of God that will bring you all of the finished works, everything that was done. And when I talked about is the power of God unto salvation, everything that that entails, your healing, your peace, your prosperity, your wholeness, your soundness, everything was wrapped in this thing. And so now faith is the means by which you appropriate or receive what Jesus died and was raised from the dead for you to have. So all of those things that I talked about, the healing, the deliverance, the peace, the joy, favor, wealth and abundance, authority and victory is available to everyone. It's available to everyone that believes you're going to have to believe that it is already a done thing. It is already it's already done for us. OK, so everything we need that pertains to life and godliness is already done. Now, I need somebody to type in the comments. It's already done. It's already done. It's already done. I don't want you to get bored with me now. Come on. I want because because see, see, this is this is the issue sometimes that we don't take time to, to really study. Most the majority, I'll say the majority of people don't study and research. They depend on the preacher to do it and just receive whatever is served to them without taking it home and studying it. It's time out for that. There's another generation that has come up now that is saying, OK, and asking questions. It's like, OK, I'm not. Come on. You got to show me this thing. What does God's word say about it? What is this? And so, so many people are in an uproar. And listen, it's like what? this is why it's such good news. Whatever you need is already done. Whatever you need is already done. But pastor, how come I still need it if it's already done? Because he says now you got to believe it. So your faith now has to be, see, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So you hearing about this and understanding that it's already done, that you just believe, watch this, and then we understand faith without works is dead because your believing will begin to prompt you to move in areas that will cause you to now acquire what's already been done. Because you believe it. You begin to step out because right believing will cause right doing. If you believe that you're the righteousness of God, you will sin not. See, this is why some people have hated. They've come against this grace message because they think it's going to give people a license to sin. He's like, no, if you believe that you've already been made righteous through what Jesus has done and you awaken to that righteousness, you will realize I'm righteous. So now righteous people don't do certain things. I'm righteous. So this sin has no dominion over me because I'm the righteousness of God. And Jesus has already freed me and whom the son has set free is free. Indeed, I understand through this salvation that I'm already blessed because he has blessed me with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places, according to Ephesians one and three. So if I understand that I'm already blessed, that I begin to think like I'm blessed. So I move like I'm blessed. I talk like I'm blessed. I act like I'm blessed. I act like I already got this empowerment on me. So that means it's for prosperity and success. So I won't fear stepping out into the business, stepping out into the ministry, stepping out into the thing God told me to do. Why? Because I believe I'm already blessed. Come on now. All right, let's keep going. Romans 4. <laughs> 
Romans 4 verses 1 through 8 in the New Living Translation. I may in here today, huh? I don't know yet. Romans 4 verses 1 through 8 in the New Living Translation. It says, Abraham was, humanly speaking, the founder of our Jewish nation. What did he discover about being made righteous, being made right with God? Excuse me. If his good deeds had made him acceptable to God, he would have had something to boast about. But that was not God's way. For the scripture tells us Abraham believed God and God counted him as righteous because of his faith. This is before Jesus came and died. He counted him righteous. Why? Because he believed. When people work, watch this verse four. When people work, their wages are not a gift, but something they have earned. But people, watch this, but people are counted as righteous, not because of their work, but because of their faith in God who forgives sinners. David also spoke of this when he described the happiness of those who are declared righteous without working for it. Oh, what joy for those who disobe- whose disobedience is forgiven, whose sins are put out of sight. Yes, what joy for those who re- whose record the Lord has cleared of sin. The Lord has cleared your record of sin. The Lord has cleared my record of sin. And he has declared us righteous in right standing with him. And every sin that you will ever do will be accredited to Jesus's account. Whoo. Because I'm going to start dealing with, I'm not dealing with it today, but I'm going to start teaching on and, and deal with the subject of what happens with sin after salvation. That, that's usually the big thing because so, pe- so many people are afraid of, OK, if Jesus covered me, if he gave me and prescribed me this righteousness without me doing anything, because you got to understand this stuff first before you can start going on to some other things, because you realize the blood. This is why you got to know the power of the blood of Jesus. This is why Satan hates songs about the blood. He hates messages about the blood, because now the blood washes away sin consciousness. And you realize this blood has now has has, has now a tone of all my sins sin accredited me and remitted my sins, has washed them all away. And now I'm forgiven before God. I've been now made righteous. God sees me as righteous. Now I need to see me as righteous. It's not how God sees you, it's how you see you now. Do you see yourself as righteous? I don't care if you've been smoking, drinking, Horn around, doing whatever, you know, stole money, but now you're born again. Because watch this. What happens is when you get born again, God's nature comes on the inside of you and it, it will begin to change your want to. And the Holy Spirit will begin to come and abide in you and live through you. The Holy Spirit. And he'll teach you how to be holy. He'll teach you how to live. He'll teach you to stay out of certain situations. He'll teach you. You can can't handle that. He'll teach you. Don't you go to that party because you know what's going to happen to you if you go. He'll teach you to say, you know what? Evil communication corrupts good manners. It's OK for you to hang out with this one. But if you spend too much time with that one, what's on them will start coming on you and your behavior will begin to line up with them. He'll teach you how to start doing things. See, we're so busy looking from the outside in versus looking from the inside out. And you need to live inside out because the Holy Spirit lives in you. Come on. <sighs> Boy, I feel like I'm working. Lord Jesus. I like this. Your sins have been cleared. Your sins have been forgiven. You've been made righteous. God forgot about it. He says, I'll remember your sins no more. I like this. He said it for my own sake. So I won't hold it against you. I'm not holding things against you. Some of you still holding stuff against you. And God already forgave you. I've been there. 
messing up and holding stuff for years. And all of a sudden I had to realize that God loved me. And he forgave me, but I was holding myself to this standard because I messed up. And I thought, man, if I messed up and I did something wrong, God forgive me. And I'm like, oh Lord, oh Jesus, oh Jesus. And I mean, walking in bondage. And that's an evil thing to be, to be so endowed with sin consciousness that you don't feel like you worthy to receive God's goodness. And I'm here to tell you, you are worthy because Jesus made you worthy. And it's time that you start changing your believing because when you start changing your believing, you'll start changing your doing and you will start receiving now. This is your receiving day. If you hear what I'm saying, if you hear what the spirit of God is saying, you're about to come in a level of receiving like you've never seen before. Because it ain't based off of you, it's based off of him. And because you believe what he did and you believe that he loves you, that every need going to be met, every bill going to be paid. And he going to start dropping some gifts on you that you didn't even tell him about, but he knew it was in your heart. He says, I'll give you the desires of your heart. I came in and saw what you wanted secretly. It ain't a bad thing, but just the fact that you like it, I'm going to give it to you. And you will, I'm, who you better hear me. You better be ready not to be ashamed of the unbridled goodness of God that's extravagantly about to be manifested in your life and that you ain't got to apologize to nobody about God's goodness in your life. And don't listen. Some of you so busy. You've been such givers over your life and givers and givers, but it's hard for you to receive. Because you're looking at it, I ain't no charity case. It ain't no, about no charity case. God just want to bless you. Well, I don't need it because I got the money. I can buy it myself. God said it ain't about that. I might want to give it to you so you can keep the money that's in your hand or do something else with it. Well, you just let me bless you. You better get ready. You better get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready, because you about to be overrun by the Hasid Agape. I mean the over the over the top goodness of God that this is why this thing is so good to be true. It's like, man, it's too good to be true. You mean that I ain't got to do nothing to be made right? That all I got to do is believe and out of that, I'm going to start living right? Um, you going to empower me to do right? And listen, I've been trying to do this by willpower, but it's going to be by spirit power. For it's not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord, that I'm going to start living through you. Listen, you're going to lay hands on people easier than you ever have before because you're going to realize this ain't me doing it. It's the greater one in me doing it. And God, I'm just your conduit. And now just flow through me. And now in the name of Jesus, silver and gold, have I none but such as I have. I give unto you in the name of the Lord Jesus. Get up and walk now. And you're going to see a level of of ease in the miraculous like you've never seen before because your believing is right now. You ain't got to work to make it happen. Gee, who oh man, this thing is hitting me more and more. The more I preach it, the more revelation hits me. See, I was sitting up in the, in the conference hearing this, some of this stuff. I, man, I took, I couldn't, I took off running. I got so full, I ain't had to run like that in years. Man, I'm telling you, the goodness of God welled up in me and because it was confirming what the Lord was already showing me. Stuff I already been preaching, stuff that's been spilling out by the spirit of God that won't in my notes. But it came out the spirit that we're about to come into a time of such ease in believing God, ease in receiving from God. Man, I'm telling you, you listen, you ain't got to go through no 30 days and nights of fasting and praying that you just start speaking stuff and then start manifesting. You're going to live a, oh, glory to God. You will, I mean, the supernatural about to hit your house. And it is hitting now, say of the Lord. If you would just believe and you will speak in alignment with what you believe, for out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speak. So building, come forth now. Vehicles, come forth now. Healing, speedily, come forth now and manifest in Jesus' name. And it is so. It is so. Sin has no dominion over you. People deal with generational curses. How can you curse whom God has blessed? The minute you got saved, you came out of your generational curse. You just got to apply it. I don't care if your daddy dealt with it, your mama dealt with it, your great granddaddy dealt with it. It's the buck stops here. Uh-huh. 
I will not die, but live and declare the works of the Lord. I will not die prematurely. I don't care if they die from heart attacks and heart disease at a certain age. It will not hit me in my house in Jesus name. Glory to God. Glory to who? Glory to God. Ooh, glory. Yeah. I want to say this. Say I am a believer and not a doubter. So I trust and believe in the finished work of Christ in my life. It's already done. Everything already done. My healing already done. My deliverance already done. My increase already done. My peace already done. My joy already done. Glory to God. Hey, I'm telling you, it's already done. Glory to God. And I ain't backing off of this. Man, this is true. This is the gospel of his grace. And I ain't letting it go for nobody. You keep the works if you want to. You can sweat like a sinner if you want to. But I ain't sweating like no sinner. Watch this. I receive the goodness of God in the land of the living. Jesus, have mercy on you. Who, Lord? Glory to God. Father, we thank you. We give you praise. We give you glory. We give you honor. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. It is already done. 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 You can't outrun my goodness, says the Lord. You can't outrun my grace. My hooks are in you. I'm about to visit you. I'm about to visit your family. I'm telling you, children are about to be visited. Parents gonna be visited. God, the divine visitation of the Lord is about to take place in people's lives to disrupt things that the enemy tried to destroy, that the enemy tried to steal, that you're going to rest now. You're going to walk in peace. You're going to sleep better. You're not going to worry about that child any longer. He says, I got him. He says, I can do it much better than you ever could. If you just believe. Hey, hey, Shareba Selebo, no, 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 bro. Yeah, many of you should be intercessors and midwives for those who haven't been praying for themselves. For you are now going to rise up in your authority and victory. And you're going to disrupt demonic forces that have been attacking their lives. And there's going to be a clearness where there was cloudiness. And they'll begin to think clearly, see clearly, hear clearly. And they'll begin to express, Lord, what must I do to be saved? And you will find some who will come back. And they'll come back crying with tears. Some who will say, Mama, Ma, I, I, something is happening to me. I don't know what it is. And it's my goodness and handiwork working in their hearts and in their lives. And you will see this thing manifest and come to pass. Yeah, at last, great rejoicing. So rejoice. Rejoice. Rejoice and be glad. Rejoice. Rejoice for your salvation at last. Rejoice. Rejoice and give praise unto me. Rejoice and see that my handiwork is already manifesting unto thee. Shereba shekando, setera masalabo sukuba, desi, ite kobe falabade, mina no no, mina, oh, many, 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 many are the plans of a man's heart, but it's my purpose that prevails. My purpose shall prevail, says the Lord, but you tried this and tried that, and you hit roadblocks and bumpers, and all of it has been designed to get you back on course, and now you'll get back on track with me, and you'll believe me again, and you'll see my handiwork. But there are people who will be delivered even from cigarettes and it'll be like the taste of it begins to leave you because you begin to walk in peace and you have recognized that you used to grab the cigarette to bring a calm and peace. But because you're tied into me and my spirit, it'll begin to fall off. I see that just as easily. Freedom, freedom in Jesus name. 
Hallelujah. And then, glory. And there may be somebody here today that's never received Jesus as their Lord. I want you to confess Jesus as Lord and say, listen, apply this. All you got to do is have faith in the finished work of Christ. Jesus died for you, was raised from the dead for you. And now the Bible says he's seated at the right hand of the Father, forever making intercession for us. He says, if you believe this, confess it with your mouth and believe in your heart that Jesus is the Christ, the son of the living God, you shall be saved. If you've never done that, I want you to do that right now, right now with me. I'm going to pray this prayer. I want you to pray it with me right now. Say, Lord Jesus, I believe that you're the Christ, the son of the living God. I believe that you died for me. I believe that you were raised from the dead for me. Come inside my heart now, Lord Jesus. I make you the Lord of my life. Say, Satan, I no longer belong to you. Jesus is my Lord, and I'll serve only him all the days of my life. Say, thank you, Heavenly Father, for giving me your son. I'm saved now, in Jesus' name. Now watch this. Say, Holy Spirit, come inside me now. Fill me to overflowing. I receive you to abide in me, and I have the ability to speak with other tongues as you give me the utterance. You, some, of, some of you just begin to flow. Yeah, out of your belly, the Bible says shall flow rivers of living water. That's the power of God. That's the Holy Spirit, the third person of the Godhead. Hey, glory to God, who's abiding in you, dwelling in you to help you walk this thing out. Who's going to reveal the scriptures to you. Who's going to reveal your purpose for you and the destiny that God has for your life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, there may be somebody that you don't have a church home, thirdly. And it may be a thing where, hey, I want to connect with this ministry. I need to grow. Get to the place God has called you. He told Elijah, go to a certain brook and there will I sustain you. And he caused the ravens to come and supernaturally feed him at the place that he called him to be at. Get to the place God has called you to be. Get to the place God has called you to be. If you want to be an e-church member, I don't care if you're not here locally with us, but you're in another state, another country, send us a message and we'll have you connect with our connect team to know how to become even an e-church member, that you can be a part of this fellowship, that God is saying this. I want you to, he told me this, he says, I want you to build locally, but think globally. And so this is the time, if you want to connect, whether you're local, we're going to have some in-person services soon to come back together on a more consistent basis so we can worship together as a church family. But I want you to know this, even in this virtual setting, you can still be connected to this ministry, to be fed the word of God, for us to pray for you and watch over you, to provide wisdom, counsel, and knowledge when needed. And that we'll be here for you to bless you and to love on you. And, and we'll, we'll share with you how to connect and how to do those things. But if that's you and God is leading you, I bear witness with this ministry. God been dealing with me about joining. I already know I was just waiting for this, that, or the other. Just obey the Spirit of God now. Stop procrastinating. Connection is important. It's something about that obedience of when God telling you to do something, He's doing it for a reason. He's connecting you for a reason. It's something about con commitment. It's, it, it's different. You know, ladies, you understand this, and you've seen this with different people. It's something about a woman who goes with a guy for a minute, and now, but he never makes a commitment. He never, he never, see what men value and commit to, they label. And so now it's like, if he, whether he calls you his girlfriend or his fiance or his wife, uh, see, it's something about that, that labeling is a commitment. It's like, okay, I'm committing to you and only you. <laughs> this is important. I don't know why I'm sharing it like this. I've never said it like this before. There's something about when you make a decision to commit. Commitment brings connection. Connection brings benefits. There are benefits to being connected to a ministry. When God calls you to a place to receive the word, to receive the anointing, to receive the wisdom, the power, whatever it is you need for your life. If that's you, I recommend Spirit of Fire Fellowship. You can send us a message, you can email us at connect at spiritify.us. You can send us a message on our social media platforms and we have somebody from our Connect team to contact you. 
how to obtain and maintain and receive what you came for today. Praise God. Praise God for you. Glory to God. You born again, know it, filled with the Holy Ghost. And prayerfully, God is leading you to join and connect. If that's what he's telling you to do, if not, then hey, get to the place he calls you to. I tell people that, listen, if God ain't called you here, don't you join here. You better go to where God called you to be. You may just want to be a partner, just receive. That's fine. That's fine. No pressure. But there are those that God, that they know God is calling me to connect, to help with this vision, to push it and move it forward in the earth. If that's you, make the decision today. Praise God. Well, y'all, I'm out of time, but certainly not out of message. But before we do anything, we want to honor God in our giving. Paul even said, I want you to choose, even in the first part of the week, I want you to put aside a portion as God has prospered you to sow and to give. As you give, it'll be given to you again. Good measure, pressed down, shaking together and running over. God will cause men to give into your bosom. He says, if you sow sparingly, you'll reap sparingly. If you sow bountifully, you'll reap bountifully. He says, watch this, you determine. He says, I don't want you giving out of compulsion or of necessity. I don't want because pressure is put on you to give, to give, but I want you to freely give with the right attitude and the right heart. It's something when you give a gift, but your heart ain't in it. It's like, here, happy birthday. Or here, I just got this for you. It's like, you might as well keep the gift because the attitude wrong behind it. He says, I want you to give cheerfully. And it's okay to expect harvest when you give. Expect it is the law of reciprocity. As a man sows, that shall he also reap. So you can determine your level of increase in harvest by how you give. In proportion to how God has blessed you, see a person who got a million dollars, to give a dollar ain't nothing to them. It, it means nothing to you. But to the person who got two dollars, to give a dollar, that's half, that's 50%. That's half of what you got. That's a different level of seed sown for them. In proportion to what you have and how God has blessed you, I want you to pray and ask God, what is it that you desire for me to sow today? And obey the Spirit of God. Praise God. Well, the information is on your screen, how you can give, different methods in which you can give. There's a QR code. Uh, okay. Oh, okay. August 7th? Okay, I just got a message. So, as uh, you're sowing, the information is on your screen. There's a QR code um, that's coming up on your screen that you can um, scan it. It'll take you to a secure page where you can give. Uh, you can give other means. I think it's Venmo, Cash App, different areas in which you can give however you desire to do so, and it's secure. Praise God. Um, I was just told, I just wanted to make an announcement. I need to make an announcement. We're having our next in-person worship service on uh, August the 7th at 12 noon. It's gonna be at the Arts Community Center. At the Arts Community Center and we'll send out more information concerning it. We're gonna come back together to worship. Um, so I want you to go ahead and make plans to attend, invite somebody to come with you, and we can worship God together. Praise God. All right, y'all. Well, whew, I pray that you got something out of this that you received. And I want us to, let's take our time with this. I want us to grow. I want you to be open. I want you to be pliable. I want you to hear the Spirit of God. Don't be quick to reject. Just listen. Here, receive what God is saying out of his word. We're going to go line by line, precept upon precept. I'm going to give you scripture. I'm going to give you the word. And I want you to trust my heart in this. I love you. We love you. We appreciate you guys. Now may the grace of God and the peace of God be upon you all. The sweet communion of the Holy Spirit. May great manifestations of God's glory hit your life like never before. In the name of Jesus, amen and amen. God bless you all. Love you guys. See you next time. Peace.